Hello, I'm uh, Sabina Stan and I'm um, uh, an assistant professor at Dublin City University in Ireland. Uh, and I'm also um, uh, in a project in University College in Dublin, also in, uh, in the same city, uh, working on the EU's new economic governance. And uh, in this bigger project, looking at uh, employment and working conditions and uh, uh, public services, we have been looking most particularly in healthcare. Part of our results uh, that show that uh, the EU's new economic eco uh, governance in healthcare had uh, advocated for the further privatization and commercialization of healthcare. I would like to argue that uh, in the EU, uh, the privatization and commercialization of healthcare has been not only a matter of national policies, but also uh, a matter of EU uh, policies, and most notably in the last decade of the EU's new economic governance. And that has uh, influenced uh, healthcare, uh, both uh, through uh, policy prescriptions on cost containment in public services more general and in healthcare more particularly, as well as uh, um, through prescriptions uh, dealing more directly with uh, the privatization and commercialization of healthcare. So uh, what I will, my presentation uh, will do is uh, uh, bring some evidence for that uh, by showing some of the results of our uh, project on uh, the new economic governance in healthcare. But before doing that, I would like to, uh, to tell you a bit about this uh, new economic uh, governance. This governance has been uh, forged uh, during the 2008 financial crisis when EU member states both inside and outside uh, the Eurozone uh, have signed uh, conditional financing programs with the IMF, but also with the EU. Uh, which were based on some documents, the so-called Memoranda of Understanding, which contained a number of conditions, which amount to policy prescriptions in uh, uh, fiscal policies, but also in social policies, including healthcare, that uh, we would consider having a uh, strong, a very strong con constraining power uh, and uh, uh, because uh, they are um, they have uh, uh, implicit, uh, based on implicit sanctions of uh, the possibility to withdraw financing in case of non-compliance. Now, two years later, uh, during the two, 2010 Euro crisis, uh, a number of uh, EU laws uh, were signed, which led to uh, the setup of the European semester which is a, a, an annual cycle of macroeconomic policy coordination among EU member states. And uh, I included a picture of, um, from the uh, European Commission page of uh, uh, the European semester as this annual cycle uh, of uh, uh, documents and decisions between different EU uh, uh, bodies uh, and uh, member states. The European semester uh, sought to uh, seeks to uh, prevent the occurrence of uh, uh, future crises and uh, practically leads uh, each year uh, to uh, the issuing of a number of country specific recommendations, CSRs, uh, to each uh, EU member states. And again, uh, what interests us uh, was uh, to um, assess their constraining power because the uh, more constraining they are, the more their implementation uh, is, um, the higher the probability of their implementation. Um, and here we can uh, distinguish between harder uh, prescriptions, uh, hard because they are based on uh, uh, sanctions. Uh, and here we include the first two uh, uh, types of prescriptions based on the two sanctioning procedures of the EU, the excessive deficit procedure and the macroeconomic imbalance procedure, uh, each based on uh, uh, sanctions of up to 0 0.2 and respectively 0 0.1 of the GDP. There are also softer uh, recommendations and prescriptions 
because uh, they have no sanctions attached as they are legally based on uh, Europe 2020 strategy. Now, uh, our um, project uh, looked at uh, NEG, New Economic Governance prescriptions in the area of healthcare. And we uh, looked at four countries, Germany, Italy, Ireland, and Romania. As you may notice, uh, a set of countries combining bigger and smaller core and periphery countries. Uh, and we looked at uh, documents between 2009 and 2019, so uh, over a period of 11 years. And what uh, we looked uh, at was uh, prescriptions potential for what we called commodification. Yeah, bringing more market into healthcare, making uh, health services more like commodities, something to be um, uh, sold and bought on the market, yeah? Or uh, we uh, uh, also assessed whether they might uh, go into the opposite direction of decommodification. So you see here uh, the two uh, possible directions. Now, uh, as you will uh, see in a second, uh, there are quite a number of uh, prescriptions for the four countries in the um, uh, period under study. So we tried to make sense and further group our prescriptions and we came with three uh, big um, rubrics, uh, as you may see here in the three columns at the top of the table, resources uh, for health services, organization or access to uh, health services. And this is what we obtained. As you may see, um, there are quite a number of uh, uh, prescriptions uh, uh, in the uh, healthcare uh, area more specifically. And uh, what we may see for um, a quick glance of uh, these prescriptions is that commodifying prescriptions are uh, much more numerous than uh, decommodifying ones. And also that uh, commodifying prescriptions uh, have advocated and here you may uh, see in the first column for the reduction of funding ex expenditure as well as service provision in healthcare. In the second column, uh, they have also advocated to manageralize or make more business-like, market-like uh, health services by organizing them along new public management lines, mm -hmm. as well as to liberalize or increase competition among services. And finally, in the third column, they advocated for a reduction of both cost and service coverage. So uh, what I will do is uh, to take you through these different prescriptions. And I think uh, by uh, uh, seeing uh, um, more uh, in them in more detail, we will also get a sense of how this commodification or commercialization or marketization of services uh, take place. So what we did was uh, um, uh, to um, put uh, the different prescriptions in this table, which uh, as you may see, uh, uh, looks at prescriptions for each country, uh, Germany, Italy, Ireland, and Romania, he figured here, uh, with different colors uh, through the period from 2009, 2019, as you may see uh, on the left and first and uh, last uh, column, uh, the years. And we will uh, figure uh, the prescriptions by these signs, uh, right bottom of uh, this figure, uh, according to their fields of intervention, uh, um, circle for resources, a triangle for services or service organization and uh, um, square for access to services. And we will also look, as I uh, said, at uh, the constraining power of uh, prescriptions. Um, very strong uh, uh, constraining power in black, uh, gray for strong and uh, transparent for weak. And what we found out uh, uh, in our study was that the single most frequent prescription was the one to increase cost effectiveness in healthcare. It occurred for the four countries in the 11 period under study uh, 12 times 
for Germany and it has been issued for Germany, Ireland and uh, Romania. Now, uh, some analysts may see uh, uh, this prescription as an illustration of the ambiguity of new economic governance language. Um, because indeed we may think that it may lead to uh, asking uh, to do more with less or uh, to do more with the same resources or uh, less with um, or uh, more with the same resources. Um, now, uh, what we found was that uh, the prescription to increase cost effectiveness in healthcare is not ambiguous at all, because um, when we did our semantic analysis, uh, we found out it was uh, um, linked in the uh, documents uh, in both explicit and more implicit uh, manners to a series of other prescriptions uh, that were more specific and were more specifically oriented to uh, commodification. Among these, we may include uh, prescriptions uh, to uh, seeking to re reduce resources for health services. And uh, uh, here we may think of uh, prescriptions for uh, that uh, um, aim uh, more generally at uh, the reduction of resources for healthcare in general, uh, such as uh, the one to contain health uh, expenditure for Ireland uh, or to reduce payment areas uh, in uh, healthcare for Romania, which would uh, uh, indeed, uh, in uh, the context of uh, austerity in which it was issued, would amount to uh, directing uh, very scarce resources away from uh, health services and paying workers, for example, to uh, pay private creditors. There are also another prescription un uh, prescriptions under uh, this uh, rubric that uh, uh, are directed, uh, are focusing more uh, specifically on the hospital sector. And here we may uh, include uh, prescriptions for Romania to contain hospital expenditure, to streamline hospital services, more specifically by uh, closing down uh, a number of hospitals, as well as the one to reduce uh, bed uh, capacity. And finally, we may also include uh, prescri here uh, prescriptions that seek to uh, move resources from one sector uh, to the other. And here uh, um, we uh, may include the prescription to shift from uh, hospital to outpatient care issued for Romania, which apparently makes very much sense, uh, but uh, uh, in practice, um, in the same uh, austerity context, it meant uh, directing uh, resources away from the already enfeebled uh, hospital uh, uh, sector in Romania towards outpatient care. It also uh, meant uh, moving services from the mostly public hospital sector to the mostly private uh, outpatient uh, care one. Uh, what some analysts uh, called uh, implicit privatization. In the same category, I think uh, we could include the prescription to focus on prevention, rehabilitation, and independent living issued for uh, Germany, uh, which uh, uh, would amount uh, to the same uh, shift of resources uh, towards, for example, uh, 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 highly privatized uh, uh, healthcare. Uh, home care uh, services that would underpin this uh, move towards uh, independent living. The prescription to increase cost effectiveness in healthcare has also been associated linked with uh, those advocating uh, marketization of their organization. And here we may uh, include those that seek to manageralize uh, uh, health services, as I mentioned before. Um, for example, the prescription issued for uh, Ireland to streamline financial management in uh, healthcare, or uh, the or prescriptions more directly focused on the hospital sector to introduce case-based funding in health in public hospitals issued for Ireland. Basically, um, it advocated for the introduction of uh, the DRG method of hospital financing. 
uh, the diagnostic related uh, group um, financing method, which has been shown uh, that uh, uh, has led to uh, further privatization and marketization of services in the cases of uh, countries which introduced it earlier on, such as Germany, for example. In the same category, we may include the prescription to, uh, issued for Romania to increase government control over hospital budgets uh, uh, and actually um, asking hospitals to uh, report regularly to the Ministry of uh, Health and Ministry of uh, Finance. Uh, here, under this rubric, uh, we may also include the prescription issued for uh, Ireland and Romania to uh, implement and introduce uh, e-health systems and uh, solutions. Uh, e-health has been presented as a, a way to empower uh, patients, but uh, in uh, practice, uh, it has been a measure uh, that uh, was designed to increase uh, managerial uh, control over uh, uh, health services by making uh, more vis visible financial flows inside the system. Also under managerialization, we could uh, uh, include the prescription to introduce performance-based payments in primary care issued for Romania. In addition to that, uh, we can include under the marketization of the organization of health services, prescriptions for Italy and Ireland to increase competition in the health sector for Italy and remove more restrictions to competition in medical services for Ireland. So this drive for liberalization. And finally, the prescription to increase cost effectiveness in healthcare has been uh, linked also to prescriptions uh, seeking to privatize uh, access, to make access uh, dependent on the private means of uh, patients. Uh, and here we have uh, 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 all prescriptions under this rubric have been uh, uh, issued for Romania, such as the one uh, to introduce co-payments for medical services uh, and establish uh, private health insurance markets, but also the prescription to curb informal payments or bribes uh, given by patients to healthcare personnel. While the latter has been, uh, have been uh, um, endemic uh, in the last uh, decades uh, in the Romanian healthcare sector, and uh, they indeed uh, uh, reproduce um, uh, inequality of access uh, to healthcare, they have also been used by um, uh, right wing uh, uh, governments in Romania to uh, press for uh, and push forward uh, their. Uh, proposals for a more thorough privatization of uh, the healthcare sector. Hence, uh, uh, that's why I included it here. And uh, uh, finally, we may also include uh, the um, uh, prescription to revise, actually reduce the basic benefits package. Yeah, so uh, reduce the number of uh, services that are covered by the national health uh, insurance. What we can see is that we have a, a, a number, a quite important number of uh, um, prescriptions going into the commodifying uh, direction. Now, there are also uh, uh, a few other prescriptions that uh, we may see as uh, uh, potentially contributing to decommodification. Here, uh, we have uh, prescriptions under two big rubrics those concerning resources, or the funding and provision of services on one hand, and those concerning access to her services on the other hand. In the first category, we may include prescriptions to improve um, provision of long-term care issued for Italy. Uh, the one to uh, increase the budget for primary care issue for Romania, as well as uh, the one also issued for Romania to remedy low funding uh, in healthcare. Under the second uh, stream of access, we may include uh, prescriptions to increase access to long-term care for Italy, to increase or uh, to increase access to healthcare more generally and specifically to vulnerable population and rural areas issued for Romania as well as the prescription to adjust and reduce health insurance contributions. What we can see, if you, as I said at the beginning, and if we compare the two 
uh, streams, uh, big streams of, uh, of prescriptions, those going more into commodification with those going more into the decommodifying uh, direction. We may see uh, from a quick comparative glance uh, uh, by looking at, the, at these um, uh, two figures is that they are not only uh, more uh, commodifying prescriptions, but they are also uh, generally uh, more, much more constraining. Yeah, and uh, that is uh, so because uh, most of them, uh, and look, especially uh, those uh, uh, marked uh, in black, uh, they were issued for Ireland and Romania when uh, these countries were under bailout financing and uh, MOUs. Now, comparatively, if you look at the uh, bottom figure of decommodifying prescriptions, you may see that generally they have uh, weak uh, uh, constraining uh, power. So what we may say is that commodifying prescriptions are much uh, uh, more numerous and uh, they have been, uh, they have had a, a, a very strong, generally very strong con constraining power, which actually uh, was verified by the fact that uh, uh, Ireland and Romania did indeed uh, implement most of uh, these uh, prescriptions in practice. Now, one will, uh, may still say, well, there are more uh, commodifying prescriptions, but um, uh, if commodifying prescriptions mostly targeted Ireland and Romania, could we uh, still talk about a common script of, uh, of uh, new economic governance uh, in uh, healthcare? Yeah, because we have only two countries out of the four under study. And uh, the, our answer to this question is that, uh, yes, we can call, uh, talk about the common pre uh, script uh, of uh, NEG in healthcare, because our analysis covered only prescriptions included in MOUs uh, and uh, CSRs. Now, I need a quick explanation of uh, these CSRs, yeah, the country-specific recommendations. As uh, I said, they are issued uh, each year to each uh, EU member state. Now, the CSRs are um, not very many uh, uh, for a particular country in a particular year, only two or three, four, maximum five, I would say, depending on the year. They are included, the CSRs per se, they are included at the end of longer documents that are called council recommendations, yeah, for Germany, etc. cetera, <laughs> uh, in a specific uh, year. So in these documents, you have the CSRs at the end and preceding them, you have the preamble containing a number of recitals, uh, which uh, explain, yeah, uh, the, uh, the CSRs at the end and also uh, explain their legal basis. Now, um, we looked only at CSRs because they have a legal basis, so they may have a varying constraining power. However, several analysts uh, noticed that in these new economic governance documents, which include council recommendations with their recitals, as well as CSRs, as well as, for example, commissions country reports, which assess, evaluate uh, how countries implemented or not, and to what degree uh, uh, their recommendations, we may find uh, other policy prescriptions that uh, are hidden. Yeah, they are not explicit, but they are nevertheless have a certain uh, constraining power because they are included in documents issued by powerful uh, institutions. So when we look at these hidden prescriptions, we find uh, uh, hidden commodifying prescriptions that target all four countries under study. And here I include a number of uh, um, examples, such as uh, prescriptions to reduce hospital beds and shift to outpatient care uh, that uh, were included in uh, CSRs for Romania, but also in recitals for Ireland and in country reports for Germany or the prescription to implement e-health and solutions, um, 
included in CSRs for Ireland and Romania, but also in recitals and country reports for Germany and country reports for Italy. Uh, or again, the prescription to increase competition in healthcare, included in CSRs for Italy and Ireland, but also in country reports for Germany. And finally, under the uh, rubric of privatizing access to healthcare, we find uh, uh, prescriptions uh, included in CSRs for Romania, such as to introduce co-payments of private insurance, but also the prescription to abolish, the hidden prescription to abolish free access to health insurance for second earners, a quite strongly <laughs> commodifying prescription uh, present in recitals and country reports for uh, Germany. Now, I think there is uh, one uh, additional uh, question that uh, we would need uh, to uh, tackle. Uh, but before uh, we need we may say that there is a common script of net prescription in healthcare and that uh, this uh, script uh, is uh, advocating for the curtailment of resources for public health services and the uh, increasing marketization of their organization. Now I would uh, uh, tackle uh, a final question about uh, this common script. So uh, we see uh, that this commodifying prescription target uh, all four countries nevertheless uh, we see that uh, they do so with uh, different constraining power, higher for Ireland, much higher for Ireland and Romania than for Italy and Germany. And the question is why? Now the answer to that question uh, that uh, uh, we found uh, is that at the start of uh, the new economic governance, uh, Italy's and Germany's healthcare were already more commodified. So what the new economic governance requested from Ireland and Romania was just to follow in the footsteps of these countries, yeah, along the commodifying pathway. And we may see that if we look more specifically at the hospital sector, um, uh, an area which was quite particularly targeted by uh, neck prescriptions in healthcare, as we have seen before. And uh, here I invite you to uh, have a look at these uh, uh, two um, figures, two graphs that uh, uh, show uh, comparatively the situation in terms of uh, uh, the share of public for profit hospitals and uh, private for profit hospital beds in the total um, before and after the NEG was uh, set up. So uh, you see here. Um, uh, 2000 data for 2008 in blue and for 2017 in orange. And what we may say <clears throat> by looking at these uh, uh, graphs is that uh, at the start of uh, uh, the new economic governance, uh, Germany and Italy had higher uh, shares of uh, uh, private hospitals and hospital beds than Ireland and Romania. And while after the NEG uh, made its way in 2017, we see uh, an increase uh, in these shares for all four countries. We see nevertheless that Ireland and Romania grew uh, uh, relatively more uh, in these terms than uh, Germany and Italy. And we may see that um, Ireland, uh, for Ireland in particular, we see a quite considerable increase in private uh, hospital beds, whereas for Romania, we see uh, uh, a huge increase for both, uh, 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 in both the numbers of hospitals and numbers of uh, private hospital uh, beds. So what uh, we may say is that uh, this common script uh, of uh, NEG uh, in healthcare amounts to a, a, a true neg agenda of uh, commodification of public health services and including importantly uh, um, services in the hospital sector. Uh, this means that uh, we may uh, look uh, at, uh, at uh, NEG uh, and in its, its impact uh, on uh, uh, healthcare and hospital uh, care more particularly uh, during COVID times and see that by pu pushing for the further privatization of the hospital sectors, the NEG directly prepared the bed for how member states were able or not to deal with the COVID uh, pandemic. In a sense, 
by privatizing hospital uh, sectors and um, um, weakening uh, their uh, capacity uh, to respond in cases of emergency, such as uh, the comic pandemic, uh, we may say that neck kills. So I will end my, end my presentation with uh, um, some uh, thoughts about the current situation. So uh, in COVID times, what happened uh, very soon in March 2020, uh, the um, excessive deficit procedure was suspended with uh, the result that uh, uh, austerity measures uh, were also suspended uh, while uh, um, healthcare expenditure was increased uh, quite importantly at both national and EU levels. Now, what we have in terms of the European semester CSRs issued in June 2020, uh, they now uh, consistently included uh, healthcare uh, in, uh, uh, in their texts. And uh, I have extracted uh, the uh, prescriptions uh, from CSRs uh, in two, uh, 2020 uh, for our four countries. And what we may say uh, is uh, that there is a common theme which is to strengthen the resilience of the health system, which has the same wording throughout the four countries. And uh, although I didn't have time to analyze for uh, and look at uh, all EU member states, I guess uh, it's uh, uh, replicated for all other um, countries in the EU. Uh, so uh, healthcare has become, of course, in the current context, uh, uh, constant focus of uh, um, the European semester. However, um, the direction in which these prescriptions go is not necessarily very clear. First, first of all, strengthening the resilience of health systems sounds very good, but uh, it doesn't say whether to uh, strengthen the resilience of public uh, health systems or also uh, public and private parts of the uh, systems. And while there are some prescriptions uh, associated with this more general one that go more uh, evidently into a, a direction of uh, decommodification, uh, here I included at the bottom of uh, my list uh, in blue, uh, those concerning healthcare workers' needs or uh, the need to increase access and coverage. There are also others that are uh, much less evident uh, or much uh, um, less uh, uh, clearly uh, going into uh, one direction or uh, the other. Uh, but they don't necessarily go into all directions in the same time, yeah? Uh, there is the one, uh, and I marked in, uh, in red here, uh, the prescription uh, to uh, continue e-health uh, measures, which uh, as we may have seen, we have already saw uh, before, uh, is um, associated uh, with, uh, uh, it, it was designed to increase the managerial control and cost containment uh, in the health sector. Uh, and there are also uh, uh, prescriptions to increase resources, infrastructure, and medical products. Now, of course, we all need that, but uh, we, uh, again, uh, once more, it's not said, uh, where should these resources, infrastructure, and medical products go, and who should it profit? So uh, I will leave you with this uh, question of, uh, of who profits. Is it uh, uh, for the reinforcement of a public solidaristic redistributive uh, health system or uh, private interests and actors will profit from that? And uh, the question is how will health services be reshaped by these struggles around resources along the commodification, decommodification uh, spectrum? Um, so I will leave you some uh, with some uh, uh, a list of possible demands and uh, targets of uh, the, the demands. Uh, so um, I think it's important to denounce the last decade's new economic governance in healthcare, uh, and that it, as uh, unfortunately uh, this year has shown, these measures and uh, privatization kills uh, quite literally to demand for the um, Stability and Growth Pact 
that uh, uh, stays at uh, is at the basis of the um, excessive deficit procedure not to be introduced reintroduced once the pandemic is over because that would uh, justify the uh, return of austerity measures and commodifying uh, prescriptions and to demand that the European Recovery Fund uh, is used for public health services, not private profit. And here, uh, as an aside, uh, uh, one could also uh, ask that CSRs should request uh, explicit, ex explicitly to strengthen public health services. So uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for um, your attention.